you guys asked, you gave me your feedback, and I listened, because it's invaluable to me. Just like me, you guys enjoyed exploring in the universe, sandbox. This game is awesome, but you know what else is awesome? Our inspirational quotes from deep, 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 deep thinkers. So I have a little list of really good quotes from some of my favorite philosophers. So I'm going to do my best to keep it interesting the, the whole time. So what we have here on the game is a solar eclipse. At least, at least partially. The first quote is by Bertrand Russell. Never let someone tell you you're loving too hard of all forms of caution. Caution in love is perhaps most fatal to true happiness. It's by Bertrand Russell. I love how this game shows you accurate portrayals of distances space. Being in control makes the average person happier. Happiness is the feeling that power increases, increases that, that resistance is being overcome. Instead of indulging in your desires, you need limits on those desires to truly be happy. John Stuart Mill says, I have learned to seek my happiness by limiting my desires rather than in attempting to satisfy them. That was by John Stuart Mill. No, Socrates, Socrates, famous Greek philosopher. The secret of happiness, you see, is not found in seeking more, but in developing the capacity to enjoy less. Okay, let's go ahead and give you guys something new to look at here. What are we going to do? Let's look at a Jupiter flyby by the sun.
So we have Rigel, which is 21 suns, 21 times the mass of the sun. I'll put him right there. Put another sun right, right there. Okay. And let's see how these play. All right, let's speed up our time steps. So, the great Chinese philosopher Confucius said, the more man meditates upon good thoughts, good thoughts, good thoughts, the better will his world be in the world at large. There's a lot of truth to that. So, this quote by Confucius, I think is extremely universal, and you know, the more I get familiarized with some of this ancient wisdom, the more I realize how very explicit times might be some some commands might be a little bit outdated in lieu of modern technological innovations some might be evolutionarily beneficial to follow if you lived 3,000 years ago, but some commands seem to, such as this piece of wisdom by Confucius, seem to really hold true no matter what the circumstance, and the more man meditates upon good thoughts, the better will be his world and the world at large. And if the world's at large, why should I remain? I love modest mouths. Had to throw that in there. I think um, it's an interesting hypothesis that all these isms, like socialism, capitalism, communism, liberalism, libertarianism,
vegetarianism. There are all these little theories that about what is wrong with the world and what needs to be fixed. But I think there are some people that have been thinking about this for thousands of years. Some people that have been more recently thinking about it in our time. And I believe the answer is already out there. It's for everyone to be the best person they can be. And what does that mean? It means looking at your life and thinking about what it is you can do to make your family better. What disciplines can you do? What responsibilities are you avoiding? What result, what inner light are you worried you might actually manifest? It's scary. It's a lot easier to think that the world is the way it is and other people won't change. But what might happen if everybody in the world didn't look outside themselves before they took a good deep look inside themselves and faced their fears. Are you fearful of what responsibilities you might have to take on to take care of your family? a heavy burden. Do you want to be the most composed member of your family at one of your parents' funerals? It's not an easy burden to carry. Do you want to tell the truth when lying could get you that job when lying might allow you to avoid taking responsibility for something you know was wrong. So for that day, do you know that you allowed one more falsity to exist in the world in one last truth. Do you want to take on the responsibility of the fact that your household, that your household is in fact composed of individuals in the sum total of good or bad that your household contributes to the community may be impacted more by your actions than you think. And what about the community? What is the community but the sum of individual households. When you start to conceive the world, conceptualize the world, as 
as a landscape of individual divine human beings who are all individually capable of becoming powerful forces to be reckoned with in their ability to articulate their truths and their ability to use reason and their ability to organize their life in their household so that the world is a little bit better, a little bit more, a little bit less inclined to fall prey to corruption and dishonesty. So I think Confucius was right. choice to meditate on what death means and therefore what life means. Our choice to manifest and define ourselves by serious values like truth and loyalty. Who knows what kind of impact and what kind of rippling butterfly effect it might have on those around you. Those who you may not even be aware notice your integrity. What kind of effect might that have iterated over your whole lifetime, over your children's What if we weren't naively running away from evil, but we confronted it and we prepared ourselves, disciplined ourselves, disciplined ourselves to be able to deal with anything that comes our way. And what if, just like after the World Trade Centers were attacked in 2001, we, not just as a nation, but as a globe, as a, as a species, what if we came together for a unified cause? It wasn't to decide what God was best or what very specific um, dogmas of religion should most be given priority and adhered to. But what if we all decided that truth, being honest, was the best? ideal. And what if we pursued that in the face of making profits? And what if we decided that money should go to educating us more about values than about facts? and things. So, our next greatest thinker, a great quote, is from the, uh, the Roman Seneca, and Seneca, 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 said the greatest blessings of mankind are within us, and within our reach. 
A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. Another Chinese philosopher, Lao Tzu, if you are depressed, you are living in the past. If you are anxious, you are living in the future. If you are at peace, if you are at peace, if you are at peace, 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 you are living in the present. If you are at peace, you are living in the present. That's a beautiful quote. That's a really, really beautiful quote. Soren Kierkegaard, the uh, Danish philosopher, I believe Danish, said life is not a problem to be solved, but a reality to be experienced. Let's put an altar in here. Oh wow. There we go. Life is not a problem to be solved, but an experience, reality. Henry David Thoreau, one of the famous American philosophers, said happiness is like a butterfly. The more you chase it, the more it will elude you. But if you turn your attention to other things, it will come and sit softly, softly on your shoulder. Then, these are some really beautiful quotes. Happiness is like a butterfly when you, the more you chase it, the more it will elude you. But if you turn your attention to other things, it will come and sit softly on your shoulder. says, if you hate a person, if you hate a person, then you are defeated by them. If you hate a person, then you're defeated by them. Confucius, Confucius said that. Another one he says is, it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you don't stop. Never form a friendship with someone who is not better than you. Never form a friendship with someone who is not better than you. That's a really, really practical piece of advice. I really like that one. And all of these are actually uh, from Confucius. When anger arises, think of the consequences. Another one from him. Confucius says, When it is obvious that goals can't be reached, don't adjust the goals, but adjust the action steps. The actionable steps. And this last one, guys. What the superior man seeks in himself or herself. <laughs> Sorry. What the superior human seeks is in their self. What the small human seeks, what the small man seeks, is in others. So I, I think we had a theme today. It was that all great.
great movements, achievements, lives lived begin inside the individual. Rarely is a human being successful and admirable, admirable. I think that's a, it's a quality that we don't showcase and talk about enough and publicly praise enough is admiralty, the ability to be admired, I guess. What the superior man seeks is in himself. What the small man seeks is in others. Confucius. Confucius. Well, I just, uh, I just enjoy talking about and putting these ideas out there and ingraining them in my own head because I have a long, long ways to go before I can ever even pretend to have enough experience or success to uh, give advice. So I'm just glad you guys are taking this journey with me to find out as much about the world and as much wisdom found in history and the great human beings that have already lived on this earth. I feel like I'm always in good company in the comments and I feel like you guys are a net positive for the world. And you guys encourage me and inspire me to try to not fall, succumb to my, uh, my negative habits and my tendency to take the easy route and my lack of commitment to a lot of things. What I'd like to leave you guys with is a show of gratitude for all of your support. Um, I'm noticing increasingly more patrons in the uh, more broad sense. Returning patrons, I guess. Regulars of the channel. I love seeing channel regulars and uh, I try my best to answer all your comments and uh, show my gratitude. So the least I can do is give Ella, Gregory, Simon Smith, Katie McHale, Katie, thank you, Cameron, Hard Yaka, and Scrappy, Potato Launch, a big, big thank you, Alexander Arruyo, Dylan, Dale, Andy, Josh Melters, Matthias, Mark, Mike, Debbie, thank you, Kieran, thank you so much, man, Sean, you're always a pleasure to talk to in the chats, Antoine, thanks for the uh, awesome suggestion, and Eric and Xander with an X, <laughs> and Richard, and Nick, Nick Toombs, thank you. Seriously, thank you all so much for your support. And of course, Tim and Steve C, and Jody, and Tristan, and Ryan, and Sandy, and Milena. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, John McQueen, man, thank you for uh, donating on Venmo. It's my first, first Venmo donation. So, um, if you guys can't afford, I've been there plenty of times. I'm kind of right there, there for right now. If you can't afford to donate to the channel, please don't, and don't feel bad. If you really want to show support, just give me a nice, um, honest feedback 
about what you think I might be able to do to improve upon what I'm already doing. That's one thing about this subject that um, I've chosen to go with, exploratory educational concept driven channel. I know it's not as popular as strictly tapping and whispering and um, trigger dedicated videos, but but I feel like I'm I have a much more intimate connection with everyone who participates in the comments, in the live chats and subscribes, of course. So, I just want to thank you all for being real and honest and genuine people and uh, genuinely open to ideas and the amount of bigots, or in other words, I had to always look that word up. Bigot means person who is not open to ideas and, uh, in fact, openly attacks ideas that they do not hold. There is extremely, extremely little bigotry that goes on on my channel, and I'm extremely proud of it. So, thank you all for just making the world and making my life just a, just better, and a better place to be in. I wish you all nothing but the best, and of course, I hope you sleep very well tonight. Keep doing what you're doing, guys. Our lives matter, and we're making an impact. Well, hope to see you on the next episode. Thank you.